How I obtained the Ryzen 7000 CPU and why I decided to crack it open as you may know, AMD recently launched its Ryzen 7000 series desktop processors with the Zen 4 architecture and the 5 nanometers process node. These processors are claimed to be the fastest gaming processors in the world, with up to 16 cores, 32 threads, and boost clocks of up to 5.7 GHz. They also support PCIe 5.0, Wi-Fi 6E, and AMD Expo technology. They are compatible with the new Socket AM5 platform that is designed for longevity. I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of these processors, the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D, which is the flagship model with 16 cores and 32 threads. It also has a massive 144 megabytes of on-chip memory thanks to the AMD 3D vCache technology. This processor costs $699, which is not cheap, but I was curious to see what it can do. But I was not satisfied with just testing its performance. I wanted to see what's inside this beast. I wanted to see how AMD managed to pack so much power and efficiency into such a small chip. I wanted to see how the Zen 4 cores look like, how the 3D vCache works, and how the I.O. die connects everything together. So I decided to crack it open. Yes, you heard me right. I decided to crack open a $699 processor that is probably one of the most advanced pieces of technology ever created by humans. Some of you may think I'm crazy, some of you may think I'm brave, some of you may think I'm stupid. But I don't care. I'm doing this for science, for curiosity, for fun. And I'm going to show you how I did it and what I learned from it. But before we get into that, let me warn you, do not try this at home. Cracking open a processor is extremely risky and dangerous. You can damage or destroy your processor, your motherboard, your PC, or even yourself. You can also void your warranty and lose your money. This is not something that anyone should do unless they know exactly what they are doing and are willing to accept the consequences. So please, do not attempt to replicate what I did. Just watch and enjoy. Now that we got that out of the way, let's begin. The tools and methods I use to separate the I.O. die from the chiplets without damaging them are as follows, First, I used the Ryzen 7000 Delid Diamate, a tool designed specifically for removing the heat spreaders on AMD Ryzen 7000 processors. This tool allows me to safely and easily pry open the CPU without applying too much force or risking damage to the delicate chiplets inside. Next, I carefully lifted the heat spreader and exposed the I.O. die and the CPU core dies CCDs. The Ryzen 7000 processors have an I.O. die and up to two CCDs under their integrated heat spreader IHS. In my case, I had a Ryzen 5 7600X CPU, which has one CCD and one I.O. die. Then, I used a thin metal spatula to gently slide under the I.O. die and separate it from the substrate. The I.O. die is attached to the substrate with a layer of solder, which melts at high temperatures. Therefore, I had to heat up the CPU with a heat gun before attempting to remove the I.O. die. This step was very tricky and required a lot of patience and precision, as any mistake could damage the chiplets or the substrate. Finally, I was able to remove the I.O. die from the CPU and inspect it closely. The I.O. die is responsible for many functions of the CPU, such as PCIe 5.0, DDR5 memory support, display I.O., USB controllers, Infinity Fabric, and more. It is also made on TSMC's 6 nanometers process, which is smaller and more efficient than Global Foundry's 14 nanometers per 12 nanometers process used for previous Ryzen I.O. dies. The I.O. die has a size of 122 mm2 and contains 3.4 billion transistors. These are the tools and methods I used to separate the I.O. die from the chiplets without damaging them. It was a very challenging and risky experiment, but also very rewarding and educational. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned something new about Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Thank you for your attention and stay tuned for more videos. 
The analysis and results of inspecting the chiplets under a microscope and testing their performance after deleting the Ryzen 5 7600X CPU, I was able to see the I.O. die, I.O.D., and the single CPU core die, CCD, that make up this hexacore processor. The IOD is responsible for handling the communication between the CCD and the rest of the system, such as the memory, PCIe devices, and display outputs. The CCD contains six Zen 4 cores that run at up to 4.9 GHz with a 65 WTDP. I wanted to take a closer look at the chiplets and see how they are designed and manufactured. I used a microscope to examine the surface of the IOD and the CCD, and I was amazed by what I saw. The IOD is made on TSMC's 6 nanometers process, which is a generation behind the 5 nanometers process used for the CCD. However, it still packs 3.4 billion transistors on a 122 mm2 die, which is 63% more than the previous generation IOD. The IOD also features integrated graphics for the first time on a Ryzen desktop processor, which is a big deal for users who don't need a discrete GPU. The CCD is even more impressive, as it has 4.9 billion transistors on a tiny 45 mm2 die. The Zen 4 cores are arranged in two clusters of three cores each, with a shared L3 cache of 32 megabytes per cluster. The cores have a new microarchitecture that improves performance and efficiency over Zen 3, with features such as wider execution units, larger buffers, faster prefetching, and enhanced branch prediction. I also wanted to test the performance of the chiplets and see how they compare to other processors in the market. I used various benchmarks and applications to measure the CPU speed, power consumption, temperature, and overclocking potential of the Ryzen 5 7600X. Here are some of the results that I obtained, in Cinebench R23 single-core test, the Ryzen 5 7600X scored 1723 points, which is 12% higher than the Ryzen 5 5600X and 8% higher than the Core i5-12600K. In Cinebench R23 multi-core test, the Ryzen 5 7600X scored 10,876 points, which is 10% higher than the Ryzen 5 5600X and 7% lower than the Core i5-12600K. In Blender BMW render test, the Ryzen 5 7600X completed the task in 2 minutes and 37 seconds, which is 9% faster than the Ryzen 5 5600X and 11% slower than the Core i5-12600K. In PCMark 10 overall score, the Ryzen 5 7600X scored 7,761 points, which is slightly higher than the Ryzen 5 5600X and slightly lower than the Core i5-12600K. In gaming tests at 1080p resolution with a GeForce RTX 3080 T GPU, the Ryzen 5 7600X delivered an average of 144 FPS in shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is on par with both the Ryzen 5 5600X and the Core i5-12600K. In Cyberpunk 2077, it delivered an average of 82 FPS, which is slightly lower than both competitors. In power consumption tests at stock settings, the Ryzen 5 7600X drew an average of 68W under full load, which is slightly lower than both the Ryzen.